specific to this, I am Lisbeth, Lisbeth borg I'm the founder of Nordic Dog Trainer. Um, I am in Norway. Nordic Dog Trainer is based in Norway, but we do uh, on, mostly online courses. So you can attend from anywhere. We have so far had students from more than 50 countries. So um, this is what internet can do. So I'm in the, Nor uh, in, in the south of Norway, just outside Oslo. Uh, and uh, we are based here. We have a venue here as well in Norway. So today I'm going to talk about crates. I know this is a topic that sometimes, to be honest, I'm dreading a little bit to talk about because there's so many very strong opinions about that. Um, I also have a strong opinion about crates. And uh, my opinion is that we don't need them. For, and now, just I want to make that very clear. I'm talking about crates for the use in a home with the door closed. If you have a crate with the door open, no problem. It's like any other you know, space, as long as your dog can choose to be there or not. So I'm talking about crates with the door closed in our homes or, or uh, yeah, not in the car. Um, so the reason why uh, I want to talk about this is, uh, okay, I'm 53 years old and I've been having dogs most of my life. And actually, Using crates as, I mean, I'm going to be quite blunt now, <laughs> as a storage place for dogs is a new thing. It is very new. Uh, I remember specifically that in the beginning of 2000, in 2003, 2004, we had a major change in Norway. Uh, and the reason why I can say that I remember it very well was that back then I also had a, a pet store. And not all of a sudden, but very quickly, my customers came uh, to the store to buy for their puppies, for the new puppies, um, not only leashes and food bowls and stuff, but they also wanted to create for their home, not for their car, but for their home. So I thought, oh no, is this, is this a new thing? Why, why do we suddenly put our dogs inside a closed crate? We didn't need to do that before. And as long as we are honest to ourselves and admit that we are using crates with the door closed for our own convenience, I'm more open to a discussion. <laughs> Please do not think that any living being prefers to be inside a small space without having the choice of leaving. Yeah? It's just not possible that that's, you know, it, it's just not possible. We all prefer the, to have the freedom of choice to go in or out. So it is for our own convenience. Um, and now, 20 years later, crates are such a common thing. And I know that a lot of breeders are telling their, their buyers of the puppies that they should get a crate uh, so they can, you know, because the dog prefers to be in a crate because it's sa they feel safer. Some people also say it's easier to house train them when they're in a crate. And it's all this very, uh, to me, strange um, ideas of why we should use a crate with the door closed. And I will keep reminding you that I'm always talking about the door being closed, okay? Because I, I know every time I talk about this, uh, there is some misunderstandings. And I want to be very clear about this because it's important for me. This is one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm a bit passionate about, to be honest, because we don't need the crates. 
there are alternatives. And we are here today, uh, not today, we are here to help you to find the alternatives. If you want to get rid of your crate, we are not judging you. I just really want you to, you know, I want to be clear about that. We don't know, don't judge for whatever reason. So if you want to be get rid of the crate, we are really, uh, you know, interested in helping you to do that. We understand, I understand that now there is actually a whole generation. That's why I said how old I am, 53. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Um, but there is a whole generation that grew up with crates being a normal thing. So I speak to young people who said they don't understand how we had dogs before we, we use crates. Because having especially puppies, yes, it's work. Everyone has had a puppy. We have to supervise. We have to be there. We have to make sure that we put away um, the the cords, you know, the electricity cords um, and things that are dangerous for, for puppies to chew on. Uh, so yes, but it's also your or our responsibility to, to do these things for and keep the animal welfare, you know. And we, again, my opinion, we don't support animal welfare as long as we put them inside crates with the door closed for a long period of time in for just the purpose of us not having to supervise, okay? So um, let me start by, uh, let me start, let me, let me start sharing the PowerPoint. So I'm just going to read the 33 uh, arguments I have to ditch the cage. Okay, let me find my PowerPoint. Yes. I think, I hope you can all see it now. By the way, we had uh, yesterday, no, no, I can't remember. It was this week. I had a, a lecture with uh, the alumni members. And we were talking about the use of AI. And this picture or this drawing is made of AI. If some of you can spot what's very strange with this picture, there's specifically one thing. Um, uh, you can write it in the chat. It's, it's not a competition. You can't win anything. But uh, it's still quite okay to be AI. You know, so uh, this is this is uh, an AI made picture. So let's start. Thirty three reasons to ditch the crate. And again, crates with the door closed. Using crates as a confined area with the door closed. And I'm not talking about using crates in your car for transportation purposes for safety in the car. You can use either a crate or a special seat belt for dogs. Uh, in Norway, it's, it's by law, you have to secure goods in the car. In Norway, the law says that dogs are goods in the car. They don't recognize it as living being in the car, but whatever, it, the, your dog has to be securely, you know, um, in the car. So it has, yeah, there are certain rules. It doesn't, it's not very interesting for you to know what it is in Norway, but you probably have your own laws in your countries as well. It's all about safety, uh, mostly for the driver though, um, but yeah, safety. So anyhow, if you are, uh, if you get a dog that has never been in a car before and you want to use a crate in the car, uh, or if you get a puppy, Dogs learn by association, so you need to train your dog to be in a crate inside the car. Yeah, the car is a moving thing, it's very different from being in a house inside somewhere. So, we even if your dog is used to being in, in a crate inside a house, it doesn't mean that it feels safe being in a crate in a car. So, the argument of using a crate at home to be able to teach the dog to feel safe in the crate when you are traveling by car or 
any other means of transportation, for example, planes, um, then, you know, you have to train it inside the car. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to read them. Very easy to, you know, understand. One, confinement stress. Crates can cause anxiety and is and it is not at all a natural environment. And often it scares the dog. Crates limits the freedom to move and explore, hindering physical and mental development. When dogs are kept in crates, they feel socially isolated, leading to loneliness and potential behavior issues. Crates prevent the dog from engaging in natural behaviors, such as stretching, sniffing, and exploring their environment. Crates can make potty training more challenging, not necessarily easier, as puppies may be forced to eliminate in their crates if left too long. The dog may associate the crate with punishment or isolation, leading to fear or resistance. Some dogs may become noise sensitive or develop noise phobias when crated as they cannot escape loud and frightening no sounds. Dogs can get injured by attempting to escape from the crate, such as by getting their paws caught in the bars. He or she may become anxious and engage in escape attempts, potentially again injuring themselves in their process. This unfortunately happens. It's not something that, you know, we're just making up. It has happened many times. There are alternative confinement options, such as play pens or puppy proof rooms that provide more space and freedom for the dog. Reliance on crates may lead to neglecting other aspects of training, such as socialization and exercise. Crates have been uh, received negative. Sorry, crates have received negative publicity, which is I think it's good that now we start talking about the use of crate more and more. Talk about if it's really a good thing, uh, leading to concerns about the impact on dogs' well-being. Puppies and dogs in all ages, but. Of course, puppies as well need regular exercise to develop their muscles. Crate confinement can lead to muscle atrophy due to the lack of physical activity. Cramped spaces can force the dog to maintain unnatural positions and potentially leading to joint problems and discomfort. Staying in, in a small crate can hinder physical and mental development as they need room to explore and interact with their environment. Lack of movement and exercise can negatively impact bone development, potentially leading to weaker bones and skeletal issues. Dogs kept in crates can become stiff, making it difficult for them to move freely when finally released. The dog may be forced to eliminate in their crates, leading to soiled fur and skin irritation. This can also create unhealthy associations with their living uh, space. Or they hold themselves too long because they try to avoid to go to the toilet at the same place they have to sleep or stay. Crate confinement can limit access to water and the opportunity to urinate regularly, increasing the risk of urinary tract infections. Dogs that are confined may develop frustration and anxiety, which can manifest physically through excessive drooling, panting, or trembling, or all different variations of stress-related behavior. Dogs' confinement to crates may uh, attempt to stretch or move in ways that strain the ligaments, potentially causing injury. Lack of exercise and confinement can contribute to weight gain and obesity, which can have long-term health consequences. 
Chewing on the crate bars due to boredom or frustration can result in dental issues, such as broken teeth or gum damage. Stress can lead to skin and coat problems, including matting, dandruff, or hot spots. Stress and lack of exercise can weaken a dog's immune system, making them more susceptible to illness and infection. Dogs subjected to crate confinement may develop behavioral problems, including excessive barking, whining, or aggression, which can affect their overall well being. And this is so true. I've had a lot of cases uh, when I'm working with dogs, one to one uh, consultations, because they are spending too much time in a crate. Uh, some dogs are spending all work day. So we work eight hours and we have to travel back and forth to work. So that can easily be nine to 10 hours. And then again at night, maybe seven hours, eight hours, all depending. So it can be up to 18 hours a day in a crate. Lack of mental uh, stimulation and limited opportunities for exploring can lead to boredom and frustration, negatively impacting a dog's mental well-being. And dogs subject to confinement in a crate may exhibit signs of depression, such as uh, lethargy, um, disinterest, and reduced playfulness. In some cases, crate confinement can lead to the development of fears and phobias, especially if the dog associates the crate with negative experiences. Crate confinement can erode the trust between the dog and their owner, and they may feel abandoned or neglected neglected. Crate confinement can lead to emotional trauma impacting the dog's overall mental health and well-being. Puppies and adolescent dogs especially, but this goes for all dogs in all ages of course, but especially puppies and adolescent dogs need mental challenges and opportunity for learning to grow and develop intellectually. Crate confinement can hinder this mental growth. Even though the dog does not whine or bark inside the crate or goes into the crate without any objections, it may be because she knows that she doesn't, does not have the option not to go in the crate. This is when, um, when people are telling me that their dogs love the crate and they, they always walk inside the crate by their, on their own. They don't have to tell them to walk into the crate. At some point, they have, you know, been uh, trained to walk inside the crate. And I know there's a lot of, of um, tips out there how to help your dog feel comfortable in a crate. So you can feed your dog inside a crate. You can give treats or something to chew. So it's something we bribe them to do, of course, because um, we want them to feel less um, yeah, to feel uh, less uh, affected by being in such a small confined space. But it doesn't necessarily mean that your dog loves to be there. If it was, a, if your dog loved the crate so much, why do you close the door? That is my argument. Okay, and the last, last uh, one on my list today is that a whole country, Sweden, in Sweden, it's forbidden by law to use a crate, except for transportation purposes, or if the dog is ill, uh, or you know, uh, for uh, confinement for a short uh, period of time in the vet's uh, practice or at home, you know, if it's really, but still then th they can use, um, they can use other uh, ways to, to limit the dog's uh, play, space of walking. I had that happen to me many years ago. I had a dog that got a, a back problem um, and uh, the veterinarian told me to keep the dog in the crate for 14 days, two weeks. Of course, to take him in and out to, you know, eat or uh, relieve himself, but uh, they told me that it should be in the crate for 14 days, two weeks. And that's just crazy. 
So in Sweden, it's forbidden. Sweden also have a great law saying that you're not allowed to leave your ho dog home alone more than six hours. You have to have someone take your dog out uh, to go to the toilet or, or, you know, to check on your dog during uh, the day if you're gone for more than six hours. But crates are forbidden. Crates with the doors closed. <laughs> Okay, so my question is, are you willing to take the risk? I just mentioned 20, uh, 32 arguments for not using a crate, including the last one, a whole country has forbidden using crates. Are you willing to take the risk of anything happening? Or can we look at other uh, ways of doing it? Here are some alternatives to a crate. A playpen provides more space than a crate while still keeping the dog confined to a safe area. It allows them to move around, play with toys and have access to food and water. So I can, I can absolutely understand that if you um, are busy at home, you have small kids, you have a puppy, yeah? Uh, it's not always easy to combine all these things. So for a short period of time, when you're making dinner or putting your kids to bed or whatever, um, you can instead use a playpen. You can make it huge, you know, it could have, be the whole room, yeah? Or baby gates. I use baby gates for a lot of things. Um, I mean, for a lot of things, when, for example, now I have only one dog, but when I had several dogs and I had male and female dogs and there were female in heat, um, you know, I spoke about the other day that in Norway, we're not allowed to neuter male dogs, uh, except for health reasons. So we need to keep them safe so they don't, you know, do something that they're not supposed to do. Uh, I use baby gates between the rooms in the house. Yeah, so baby gates or other barriers um, to close off specific areas is so much better. Or a whole room, a small room or an area in your home that you remove potential hazards um, and using baby gates to keep the puppy uh, inside the room. I always prefer, again, the baby gates because then you can see um i don't have a picture on this computer but my ex-husband made this really really great door because we also had some jumping dogs <laughs> years ago so he made like uh, a a, ba a special baby gate he made it with uh, like a door very thin wooden door like an extra safety with with um baby gates or, or like a see-through thing so we could see each other. Uh, that's important. Uh, and of course, we always have to make our homes um, safe and secure for our dogs. So no poisonous stuff or plants or whatever it should be uh, should be laying around any time, yeah? Um, and if your dog is um, chewing on things, that's a whole other Facebook Live. But we can help you with these things. There is a reason why your dog is chewing and so on. And then you can manage the environment until we solve the issue, the problem, the core, the, the problem, why your dog is chewing on things. In case of puppies, they are chewing for a very short period of time when they are itching in their teeth and they lose their teeth so um yeah that 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 can be a problem of course so you have to manage your environment and make it safe the best thing is of course supervised instead of creating you can use supervision to keep an eye on the puppy or the dog and prevent accidents and destructive behavior and this is always the best option but of course, it's more work for us than putting our dog in a crate and close the door. So 
I'm coming back to what I said in the beginning. As long as you admit to yourself that you're using the crate for your own convenience. Hmm? <laughs> so be kind. You don't have to use a crate. There are many other options. And really, we can help you uh, to, to uh, sort things out. Okay. So, okay. I, I truly believe that most of you following Nordic Dog Trainer uh, who are attending our lives uh, and free webinars and, and paid courses and so on, uh, you agree to this and you know this already. But there is a lot of people who don't know this. So that's why I want everyone to get the opportunity to learn that there are, um, there are um, um, uh, ways of doing it without using a crate. So imagine if you're a dog, first time dog owner today, you're getting your puppy today and your veterinarian and your breeder and even your dog trainer is telling you that you need to, to buy a crate and close the door because, it, because of all the reasons they use. A lot of people tell me that they don't feel comfortable with that. They think, oh, it's, it's against their you know, gut feeling, but they still choose to do it because we all believe in authorities, authorities such as a dog trainer or a behaviorist or a veterinarian or a breeder who are supposed to know better. <laughs> yeah. So please, if you are concerned as well, share this so that more people get the opportunity to, to learn about this. And if you're a dog trainer as well, maybe do this yourself you know, maybe other social medias or on your courses so that we can inform people. It's all about information and knowledge and we need to get that out there. Um, so yeah, uh, when you Google as well, crates, uh, YouTube, AI, ChatGPT, you know, they will all tell you that so many reasons why you need to have a crate for your puppy. And really, it's uh, not true. It is just not true. Okay. So, um, basically, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Yeah. Um, actually, removing the crate is what has helped a lot of my clients as well. We can see huge improvement in um, behavior lower stress, more quality sleep, all of these things. Yeah. Maybe we should um, do a, a webinar with uh, a few guest speakers um, later this fall or in the spring. I'll actually ask Julia Robertson and do that. Yeah. To answer your questions as well so that we can help you. Okay. Thank you very much for listening again. And please share. Uh, these people get to, you know, um, anyone who's thinking about getting a dog or already have a dog or have a dog and feel that they're not doing the right thing, you know, then they feel good when they hear that there are more people out there like them. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye.